This is Twit. Big week for mobile uh, mobile phone news, and as such, reached out to friend of the show, friend of the network, Miriam Joar, MobileTechPodcast.com is your show. Miriam, it's great to have you back. How you been? Hey, hey, hey. Good to see everybody. Uh, yeah, it's been a weekend. It's not even done. It's what, Thursday? Oh. And uh, I still have to do my show this today, and and then on top of that, like, it just keeps coming. We got we got new headphones this morning as well, so you know, it's just yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So let's so let's back up a little bit. Samsung had their announcement yesterday morning. That was Wednesday morning. Their unpacked announcement where they showed off the Galaxy Note 20, the Note 20 Ultra, the Galaxy Z Fold 2, which I'm sure we're going to talk about a little bit. The Galaxy Buds Live, which are what you're talking about, I assume. No, and no, we no. Also, I'm talking about no? something else. Oh yeah. Whoa, oh, there's more. Holy cow. As I said, there's holy more. Holy cow. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, maybe when we talk about the Buds Live, I'm curious to know what you're talking about. Uh, they also mentioned the Galaxy Watch 3 and then the Galaxy Tab S7 and the S7 Plus. So an insane amount of hardware, all of it bronzed. <laughs> so, I mean, it looks like a total family of hardware, essentially. That, that would make you, uh, you know, break your bank if you bought them all. But, um, you know, we don't have to talk about every single item here, but I'm curious because you have your hands in all sorts of hardware and you know the note 20 is just you know this year's note series which every year for the note series release i mean it's always a big deal because the note phones are just such a like especially people who love the note phones they're a passionate bunch so what did you think of samsung's unveiling of the note 20 and the note 20 ultra they now have the two different devices i, I don't know what are your thoughts are you a big note fan um, I think Note is a great is a great phone every year, but I think that this year is a bit weird. Uh, and I, I can dive into the details. If you want. Did you even mention the Pixel 4a as well? Like, there's there's all kinds of things happening this week. Oh yeah, we're going to talk about the Pixel 4a okay. a little <laughs> bit later. Let's focus on Samsung now. All right. Absolutely. So the notes, yes, yes. The Pixel. The 4A. notes. So you know, two notes, uh, 20 and 20 Ultra. Um, you know, they're kind of renaming things a little bit. No more plus naming. They're they're kind of following the S20 naming conventions, and of course, you know, the Ultra is very much the phone, right? It's like you know everything but the kitchen sink, except for headphone jacks, since they're no longer doing that. Uh, you know, new improved S Pen features. It inherits most of the camera features of the S20 Ultra and uh, Snapdragon 865 Plus. Uh, you know, all the RAM, all the storage, all the features, all the display, everything, right? Uh, 120 hertz, quad HD, everything you you want. Basically, take a S20 Ultra, add an S Pen, make it squarer, get a Snapdragon 865 Plus in there, and you're good to go. And for that, I have no issues. I mean, if you are... If you want the best that Samsung makes, this is it. If you want a Note because you're, as you said, they're very loyal Note followers, this is it. However, the Note 20 is a very puzzling phone because last year, for the first time since uh, I think the Note 4, when we got the Note Edge at the same time, we've gotten two Notes. So the, the, the Note 10 last year was a smaller Note, but spec-wise identical almost. And so for people who wanted a smaller device that can easier to, hand, to hold in hand with a stylus, with an S Pen, that was it. And so we were expecting the same this year, but then the rumor mill was telling us otherwise. And sure enough, we're getting the Note 20, which is the same size roughly as the Note 20 Ultra, but doesn't have a curved edge display, meaning for some people that's a plus. I prefer f flat displays, but you don't get quite those edges, you know, those super thin and slim edges uh, because of that. And... Um, you know, the cameras are straight out of the S20, S20 Plus. So, you know, it's downgraded in specs, but it still has the Snapdragon 865 Plus. The big problem with the Note 20 is it really should be a Note 20 Lite because there are other things about it that are kind of egregious for a $1,000 phone. Let me start with the plastic back. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll pause there and right. let it settle. For, I mean, well, yeah, you can just let that sink in because that <laughs> I, was that know, was a detail. Mm, I need to breathe. For ease a second. into that, that yeah. one. You know, yeah, just okay. the plastic design for a thousand dollars. Plastic right? back. Now the chassis is still metal. The front is still Gorilla Glass, but the plastic back. And then we have the same problem with uh, the display. The display is a 60 hertz 1080p panel on a Note that costs a thousand dollars. I really feel like Samsung is trolling us. Like, they're like, <laughs> let's see what we can get away with. And I think it's a slippery slope. I'm really concerned with this because we're going to start seeing maybe the S30 next year with a plastic back and some revisions. And, you know, 
Um, when OnePlus made the Nord, I have it right here. Um, if you know they did, I guess it's going to be blurry because of my uh, blurred background. But the, the 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 Nord has a plastic chassis frame, right? Because it's a four hundred dollar phone, four hundred fifty roughly dollars. And for that, you know, that's one way they cut money, cut costs. It makes sense. But a thousand dollar phone doesn't make sense at all. And then it's, who puts a sixty hertz ten eighty p panel on a flagship in twenty twenty? I, I guess LG did with the V sixty. That went really over well when the reviews came out. I'm not sure what Samsung's taking. I've been discussing this on Twitter with a bunch of other tech journalists, and I think the, con the consensus right now is that A, Samsung's trolling us. B, uh, is this a carrier play, right? So they're saving some money and better for their bottom line, the Samsung is, and at the same time, they can pass those savings on to the carriers, especially in the US. Because here's the thing. Nobody wants to spend a thousand dollar on a phone anymore. I mean, very few people want to because we're in a in a you know crisis with the economy right now. People can't afford it, and so the mm -hmm. carriers are like, "Well, we're still going to try to peddle these things, and let's see if we can uh, make money because we're going to sell less of them." So they made a plastic bag. That's all we can think of, and the display, of course. Uh, you know, I just want to remind everyone before you yell like it was no big deal. <laughs> the S twenty base. You know, you can now buy for what five, six hundred dollars on the market. Is you know, it's probably down to that. Is got a one twenty hertz quad HD display. Okay, you you have to choose between quad HD and one twenty hertz. That's it's the same with the Note twenty Ultra. But that phone has it, and you can now. You know, the other thing I want to ask is, why would you buy a Note twenty Ultra unless you're a Note fan? If you can buy an S20 Ultra at a discount now, or if why buy the even the, even if you don't care about the display and the plastic bag, why buy no 20 when you can buy an S20 or S20 Plus for that? So you really have to want the stylus at this point. And yeah, I don't really understand Samsung's strategy. Like Samsung's strategy doesn't make any sense because they didn't cut any other corners. They, they didn't remove like reverse wireless charging or anything. Just a plastic bag, and then the display just took a dive. It's like okay. Oh, I don't know. I don't get it. Uh, it makes me worry about Samsung having lost the plot. And I think they did a while ago, but I wasn't quite able to put my finger on why. And now I think I have it. There it is. Mm. They are just commodified to the max. And at this point, they don't care. They're just pumping stuff out. Well, there's a lot of premium smartphones right now that we're seeing are costing more than than people may have expected. And I think some of the blame seems to be going towards the Snapdragon 865 series being a more expensive processor because of the built-in 5G. At least that's been kind of one of the boogeymen that people have been pointing to. Maybe that has something to do with it. I, I have no idea. I completely agree. It's, it's really interesting that the Note 20 is so stripped down considering kind of its genesis as being like the best of the best. Now, granted, they have the Ultra to kind of maybe fit into that category. But again, right now is not the best time for a $1,500 smartphone, um, especially. So then, you know, we'll talk about Google Pixel in a, in a few minutes, but then, you know, looking ahead at, at Google's plan to take the 5 Series and go kind of lesser uh, premium with it, with the, you know, with the 765G processor kind of taking it down a notch, maybe that actually makes a lot of sense. It's just, it just comes down to timing. Um, anything else from the Samsung event that like particularly impressed you or or the uh, the complete opposite of that whatever that is oh absolutely what do you think about no some no of the other i stuff? mean look i think i think samsung still makes us best smart watches uh short of buying an apple watch so i think the the galaxy watch 3 i'm excited about i'm wearing a, a galaxy watch one first gen still for a couple of years i've had it now still like it's rock solid it doesn't have a scratch on it despite me abusing it all the time battery life is still good just works like a charm it's no apple watch but you know, compared to a Wear OS device, it's miles and miles ahead. And I think that uh, Samsung's you know doing a good job in that in in the wearable area. The 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 yeah. bean shaped Galaxy Buds Live are um, interesting. I uh, they they kind of pulled a Huawei here because Huawei the, with the the Free Buds three had a non sealed design for right. noise can with no with active noise canceling, which is what they did. And so you know. Um, I haven't heard them. I don't know what they're like. I like the Buds Plus. I thought the Buds were meh. So I think the Buds Live could be pretty good. And uh, again, Samsung, I think, is doing a very good job in its ecosystem and accessory um, play. I think they're just lacking on the phone business. And 
you know, back to your thousand dollar thing. This is the Snapdragon price is causing every manufacturer to have issues around pricing phones right now. I'm not blaming Samsung for having to make thousand dollar phones because of those chips at the high end. I'm just blaming them for cutting corners on a phone like that egregiously. And um, but, you know, the Snapdragon thing, ultimately, I have three now Snapdragon 765 phones on my desk. You know, the 75, 765G, the, the kind of supposedly mid-range phone. And you can't tell the difference. The only way you can tell the difference is if you're playing some super hardcore games. And I think that's going to be yeah. an extremely popular chip. Also, it's better, better at power management because it has integrated 5G modem. And, you know, for those of you who are, you know, spec monster people out there, listen to me <laughs> and take my advice. Don't You don't need an 865. You, you really don't mm. anymore. Um, mm. And so consider that. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about really briefly about Samsung, and I think as, as, to me is the most exciting thing, is that, you know, if you want like the, you know, McLaren or Pagani or or whatever it might be, you know, um, um, Bucati of, of smartphones, you only, only look no further than the Z Fold 2, right? The Galaxy Z Fold 2 is really showing... Right. Um, you know, Samsung flexing its expertise in hardware and design muscle. This is the fold we always wanted from day one. You know, last year's fold now yeah. really looks like a prototype when you see this. And I'm super excited about this. This is a Halo product. Like, there's no way people can reasonably afford 2K, right? But it mm -hmm. has to happen. This phone needs to exist for this technology to come down in price and become a thing. And a lot of people are going to ask and say, Miriam, you know, it's not a thing. We don't care. I don't want a folding phone. And maybe you don't. And that's okay. But trust me, five years from now, this will be commonplace. And a lot of people will be using them at a sub thousand dollar price point. And we will take it for granted. And we will look back at the Galaxy uh, Note, uh, sorry, the Z Fold 2 uh, as the kind of the, the, the you know, the spark, right? The, the previous Fold, yeah, Oof. too many issues. The Z Flip was also really good. And I think that, you know, that's, but that's a different form factor. I think this tablet turns into a phone thing is finally here with the Z Fold 2. Yeah, yeah, I'm really impressed with the uh, changes that they made. I think you're absolutely right. It feels like the first one was beta. There were so many weird, uh, like uh, unsharpened edges. I mean, not literally, but, you know, it just really seemed like the planning wasn't quite there. They had all of those issues with dust getting underneath the screen. They came back, but even then the design with the the weird funky front display that, that just never looked right and the cutout on the inside, they really kind of tackled those things and tackled them well in this. I'm really excited for that. And I think Leo's going to be ordering that as well.